Hey everybody, today I want to talk about a widely used term that's highly misunderstood, in my opinion highly abused, and that's nut busting or bolt breakaway torque. Now those sound really impressive, and you might think that's the maximum torque that an impact wrench could achieve, but in reality it's nothing more than a marketing term that's designed to make one impact wrench look a lot more powerful than another impact wrench. And we've spent a lot of money buying different Skidmore Wilhelms, which is actually one of the only ways that you can prove what torque is. We have the bench mount models, we have the beam mount models, and now we have the digital torque meter. Now they do measure different things. The digital torque meter is going to show us what the dynamic torque is, specifically how hard that impact wrench is going to hit with each impact. And then the bench mount and beam mount units will show us what the maximum working torque is. We've bought right hand as well as left hand thread nut and bolts, and that means that we can see exactly how tight it can make something in forward and reverse. So what I want to do in this video is show you not only what the dynamic torque is, what the working torque is, but then we're going to prove that this bolt breakaway or nut busting torque is nothing more than a marketing term designed to make one impact look more powerful than the next. The impact wrench that we're going to use in this video is the Milwaukee 2763 half inch high torque brushless impact wrench. We're going to be using fully charged XC 5.0 battery packs. And what I've posted on the board are the manufacturer's specs versus the truth or what I come up with. Now the manufacturer's specs do not determine what the dynamic torque is, what the maximum torque is, and really how they came up with that number. All they're telling you is in first gear it's going to have 100 foot-pounds and in second gear it's going to have 700 foot-pounds. Now they are saying that the nut busting torque is 1100 foot-pounds which is a lot more than the maximum torque they're claiming. And judging from the previous videos that I've done with the 2763, I have previously tested the maximum forward and reverse working torque using two different Skidmore Wilhelms. The one on the bench has a reverse threaded nut and bolt for measuring maximum reverse torque. The one on the beam has a right hand thread nut and bolt designed for measuring forward torque. Now I do my torque test with 15 seconds of run time and with that we actually beat their spec significantly. However, we did not come up with that 1100 foot pound number which is the nut busting torque. Because we've already tested the 2763 extensively in previous videos and we've already done maximum forward and reverse working torque ratings after a 15 second run time, then I've already marked down those from the previous video. Now in both cases the forward and reverse maximum working torque exceeded what Milwaukee claims with this impact wrench and in that case it actually made them look better. What we were not able to prove is the dynamic torque or how hard the impact wrench can hit with each impact. And what we're going to do is prove that now using a Model T3000 Skidmore Wilhelm digital torque meter. This can accurately measure torque up to 1,000 foot-pounds. We're going to prove what the dynamic torque rating is in first and second gear in both forward and reverse. Now along with this I will be using a fully charged 5 amp hour battery pack. And what we'll be able to do is have maximum torque out of this impact. So now that we've done our dynamic torque testing, we can take a look at what numbers we got versus the manufacturer's specs, and we can see the numbers do not line up at all. You might ask yourself why this is, and they only tell you what the maximum first gear torque is. They're not disclosing whether that's forward or reverse, and they only tell you what the maximum second gear torque is. Also, they don't disclose forward or reverse or their testing methods. When we look at that peak dynamic torque, or how hard the impact wrench can hit with each impact, first gear is actually exceeding their specs significantly, coming in at 161 foot-pounds in both forward and reverse. However, second gear is going to be significantly lower than what they claim, coming in and forward at 422 foot-pounds, coming in and reverse at 421 foot-pounds. Compare that to the 700 foot-pound rating and you'll see a big difference between the two. Now there's two different torque specs that you always want to keep in mind, the dynamic, which is never disclosed, the maximum working torque, which would be their 700 foot-pounds. However, the maximum working torque that we achieved, like I showed you at the beginning of the video, was much, much higher. 
But when we take a look at that maximum forward and reverse dynamic torque rating, compared to the working torque rating, you'll see the huge jump the longer it impacts. So where it would apply 422 pounds of torque initially, after a buildup of time over 15 seconds, the nut and bolt would tighten up to a maximum of 862 foot-pounds, which is more than double. In reverse, if you had a left-hand nut and bolt, it would actually tighten that nut and bolt to over 1,000 foot-pounds using 421 foot-pounds of torque. So, how is Milwaukee coming up with this 1,100 foot-pounds of maximum nut-busting torque when none of our testing, including their numbers, match up with that? There's actually only two ways that a manufacturer can come up with a higher rating like that, whether it's nut busting or bolt breakaway torque, and both involve tightening up a nut or a bolt much tighter than the impact wrench can actually achieve, and then try to immediately remove it with that same impact wrench. So in this case, I could look at the Earthquake XT 3 quarter inch impact wrench. It's much more powerful coming in with a maximum working torque rating of 1,500 foot-pounds. Or they're using a very large torque wrench like this 1-inch Proto. With two extension handles, the overall length with this is coming in at over 8 feet long, and it has a maximum range of 2,000 foot-pounds. You would tighten up a nut or a bolt with either one of these. You would take a look at the reading to ensure that you were above the maximum range with the impact wrench, and then you'll immediately try and remove it with the impact wrench. By doing so, you can remove something that's actually tighter than what you can achieve because the threads are extremely hot. You don't have all that friction to overcome, and let's say you tighten this up to 1,000 foot-pounds, about 800 or maybe 850 foot-pounds would remove it. So if we look at our maximum forward or reverse working torque, and we tighten down a nut or a bolt in the Skidmore using the Earthquake XT to 1,100 foot-pounds, the Milwaukee shouldn't have any problem removing it. Here's the Skidmore Wilhelm that we're going to use in order to tighten it up more than the Milwaukee can achieve. We're going to go all the way to the 1,100 foot-pounds. And to show you that nut and bolt is not already hot, I'll take the Milwaukee M12 Thermal Imager. We'll go ahead and take a reading. Now if I re-zoom in on the screen, you can see it zooming in right on that nut, and it's coming in at 64.9, or roughly 65 degrees. So right now it would need to have more torque in order to remove something. But when I run it on and off, and I heat that nut and bolt up, it will require less friction. And also remember that that nut and bolt is going to be lubricated. So what we'll do is run it on and off with the larger impact wrench. We're going to heat it up. And then we're going to take another reading to see how hot it is before we try and remove it with the Milwaukee. So now that we ran it on and off a couple times, you can see that the threads have really heated it up. In fact, they're coming in at roughly about 85 to 90 degrees, which is a significant jump. And it would take less torque to overcome the friction on the threads now that the nut and bolt are hot. I'm going to go ahead and run this up to 1,100 foot-pounds now, and we'll see if the Milwaukee can remove it. So now that I've ran it up to 77,000 pounds of bolt tension, because of the nut and bolt combination we're using, you would divide that by a factor of 70, coming in exactly at 1,100 foot-pounds. And I'll go ahead and use the Milwaukee now to see if it can remove it. So, because it was able to remove the 1,100 foot-pounds placed on it by the 3 quarter inch impact wrench, they would now call this 1,100 foot-pounds of nut-busting torque, even though the Milwaukee was not able to achieve that on its own.
So now you've seen firsthand how manufacturers come up with the nut busting or bolt breakaway torque. It's not really based in reality. That is something that is achieved specifically because of the testing methods that they use and because the nut and bolts are extremely hot. Now, if that had cooled off to room temperature, the Milwaukee most likely could not have removed it. But in order to achieve those maximum ratings, the place on the packaging, this is the type of testing that they go through. Now, what's more important is going to be the dynamic torque or even the maximum working torque ratings. And when you are looking at an impact wrench, especially one that I've reviewed, I'm going to show you exactly what those numbers actually are. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.